coming up on this episode of Courage Over Comfort with your hosts, Matt Logan and Beth Blanchard. We wrote a book and for six months, I don't think we sold the book. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, some celebrities got a hold of it, some guys in the NFL, some CEOs, and it just took off. You, me, everyone watching is not going to avoid struggle. You Correct. just need to learn to yes. struggle well. Yes. You just need to learn that, okay, that is part of my journey. It's not my, it's not my story. It's not my identity. The bus seems like a gimmick, right? Like when you first look at it and things, it's a gimmick. But you told me there's been three engines in this bus. Yeah, the bus is not, the bus is legit. Yeah. Like the like bus, it's... like, and no one would sit around a boardroom and go, how should we grow a business? Well, let's buy a 1970 bus and drive to 48 states and meet people one by one. Right. And we've never sold a thing out of the bus. Yeah. We, we're just, we shouldn't, we should be selling weed. Cause everyone thinks we're selling weed out of that bus. <laughs> right. But we say hope not no. Like we're selling hope. That was a whole lot of fun for me down in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I'm jealous for two reasons, because it's warm there and you got to talk to an amazing person. They were all bundled up, though, when I was down there. I'm it was sure. like in the 50s, Whole 50, yeah. <laughs> you know, like 57. And they're Gosh, they're like survivors. literally, I, I mean, at parkas. <laughs> it's amazing what the, the difference is in that totally. zone. Totally. Yeah. So you, you were in a tank top out there then, I imagine? <laughs> well, if I would have had one with, I probably would have. <laughs> Um, there's a bus, you know, don't miss the bus in this episode. It, yeah. Wasn't that pretty cool? I mean, it's You didn't a get to go, bus. unfortunately, but no. that's just the way it rolls sometimes. Literally and rolls. Exactly. <laughs> and he is, uh, he's a doctor. He actually um, retired early and he's mm -hmm. going to talk about that and things, but yeah. let's just welcome him. Let's do it. Troy Amdahl. Say ooh la la. <laughs> ooh la la. Here we go. We're sitting here like arguing about our time, yeah, right? Kidding, right? Kidding. Thanks for how to balance all of our time. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for letting me come in and invade your home. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're here, man. R Rochester native and stuff, though, and obviously that's where I'm from, that area and things. So I appreciate that. I'm down in Phoenix. Yeah, got to visit you. Yeah, I'll yeah. visit Minnesota in the summer. You visit <laughs> Phoenix for like two weeks in the summer. Uh, yeah, all all summer actually, still at a lake in northern Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. What park? Can I? Uh, ask? Up by Brainerd. Yeah, yeah, nice. Been going nice. there even when we lived in Rochester. That was kind of our happy place as a family. Pine River, I, well, even north of there. Even, yeah. even north, yeah. I have a buddy that lives up in Pine it's River. Gorgeous. So, yeah. When the walleye are biting, it's even better. Yeah, I I've been enjoying like we've just been just chatting and enjoying the stories that you've been sharing and traveling all over in the bus and the bus is here. Bus is here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna snap some pictures. You definitely. Yeah, we yeah we're gonna put this. Up we should have done the interview in the bus. That would have been cool. That would have yeah, been, yeah, cool. been cool. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we could do a little segment sure, in the bus. Sure. Yeah. But uh, so your story is incredible. Like you retired early, um, but it wasn't an easy retirement either. But yeah, you talk about debt that you had and mm -hmm. things like that. But so I was thinking when I was in the lift coming over here, like I'm going to sit and chat with a guy and say, Ula. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean that that seems a little awkward at first, doesn't it? It does. It tell, does. tell us about Ula. It, it's really a, a strange story. So, born and raised in Rochester, yeah, and um, had a chiropractic practice in, in Northgate, like northwest side of town, yeah, and just a great family practice. Loved it. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was, I remember when I was young. Um, Grew up in out by Marion, which is southeast of us. I know. Yeah, yeah, I lived right out there. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, we had the kind of family. My dad worked two and sometimes three jobs yeah. to provide for four kids, right. and uh, we always we were loved, so we felt rich. But at the same time, there were a lot of talks about money, yeah. and many times not enough of it to do everything we wanted to do in life. Right. So. I remember as my dad would go to IBM, you get IBM, oh, like you'd go to uh, IBM by day and have a tree nursery at night and sit on the yeah. town board so we could go to Disney World once in our life. Right. That kind of, and I remember that I kind of, I wanted something different. Um, that part of it. I wanted my dad at the end of the day. So I remember in 11th grade, as nerdy as this sounds, like being daydreaming in class going, I want to be debt free and retired by the time I'm 40. Yeah. And that's a crazy thing to write down in 11th grade. Just, but just knowing that I felt that would give me the freedom. Um, and it, we went the wrong way right away. I remember at my peak being $755,000 in debt. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And I remember the stress that caused in just life. I, I married a girl from Rochester, a girl I went to kindergarten with out of Burr Oak. No way. You know, Burr Oak. Yeah. I have a buddy that lived across <laughs> yeah. the street from there. Yeah. 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 She was our homecoming queen. I was a nobody. So I had to earn my way. I definitely married up. Um, but so we, 
yeah, so we didn't like how that felt. And it, early in our marriage, we said, you know, this, we have to do this differently. So when my friends were buying and leasing new fancy cars, I was driving a Pinto and a Ford Fairmont and a paid for Cavalier. <laughs> we were doing it differently, but eventually, eventually, it didn't take me until 40, it took me until 42, mm -hmm. we hit that mark. And it, this was at the same time where as much as I love being with patients, the paperwork was getting more than the patients. Yeah. And I love helping people and I don't like doing paperwork. Right. So we came down here, saw this in January, February and go, why are we doing this? <laughs> and we moved and we, it, was a, it was a big step. Um, and what happened then is I thought I thought it was done. I thought that, okay, I'd saved, we'd sacrificed, we were diligent with our finances. So now we're just gonna retire and hang out with our kids and travel and just enjoy the nice weather. A buddy of mine, um, and his name's Dave, we used to go as a group of guys to Las Vegas once a year. Not that kind of Vegas trip. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> it was, it was, we did have fun. Vegas is a lot of fun and you don't have to go there for really the wrong Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. But during the day, you know, we had fun at night. But during the day, we'd grab those little recipe cards, those 3 by 5 recipe cards. And we'd sit at the floor of the Hard Rock and we'd put them in stacks of seven. And as a group of guys, we said, what do we want for our lives? So not just in career and not just in money, but what kind of dad do I want to be? What kind of husband do I want to be? What, what's my faith walk going to look like next year? What am I going to do for fun in this next calendar year? And as a group of guys, we would say, this is where we are. This is where we want to go in all these seven areas. And also we would map out a course to make that happen and keep each other as a group of guys like accountable. Like you said, you said you want to be out of debt, but you just leased a car. So I have the permission to hit you, yeah. you know? So like, that's what we did is, and we all achieved that definition, which we call an Ula definition. It comes from Ula la, yeah. because if money's good, relationships, good health's good, strong faith, walk sense of purpose, you're having fun. It's Ula la. Yeah. And we, we all achieved success. That definition of success at a young age. Well, I was here and we drifted as a group of guys because families and career and life, it just, and it's I natural. got natural natural and i got a call from one of these guys who's who's just a great dude and he said you're not going to believe it but i lost it all i lost a multi-million dollar house i lost a million dollar business i have my five kids we're getting a divorce i'm driving my mom's car i i said are you still doing that ula thing and he said no i said well you should have been <laughs> uh, i am i still step outside of my life and i still look at my life and say how can i do better and is my life balanced and I said, go back to that. I said, this is, this is just where you are. This is a dark spot. It's where you are. It's not who you are. You have talent and you have something inside of you. We believe is a God-given greatness. There's something inside of him. I'm like, you have that. You need to share with the world. So this is just a season for you. And he went up the mountains. He lived in Utah. And he came back and he went from defeated to inspired in, in just that moment. And he said, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, cool. And I hung up the phone <laughs> and he calls me back later. We were in touch and he said, you're not gonna believe it. But he said, I gave my mom her car back and now I got a minivan. Yeah. And he, you know, and I, and I now have a, an actual place. Probably a debt free minivan. Yeah, debt free minivan. Yeah, yeah. but it wasn't nice. Right. And, it, and he didn't have the multi-million dollar house anymore, but he was renting a condo. And so, I mean, he was making progress. He goes, we need to share this. Like we need to share this, this, this works. And I'm like, yeah, it works. We've been doing it for years. Why you quit? <laughs> and he said, no, we need to share this. So he came up to the lake one, one weekend with his kids. And as the kids inner tubed and played in the water, we sat up in the porch and wrote out this process of what we've done for years. And in, neither of us have written a paper longer than four pages. <laughs> and in three days, we had 95% of a book written. Mm. And we we said, this is what it is. This outlines the process of these are the seven areas that we all, we didn't focus on all of them. Because yeah. as a culture, we get so focused on money and career that the people who get there realize there's something still missing. Mm. Um, these are the things that get in the way, like fear and guilt and anger and self-sabotage. Yeah. We call those blockers. The next section of the book talks about accelerators, like things that get you there faster, like love and gratitude and humility. And then at the last section, which is the most important, are the three simple steps. Mm -hmm. This is where I am, this is where I wanna go, and this is the steps I need to take to make it happen. And in doing that, he got his ULA back. And now a quick word from our sponsors. KFG Coaching is sponsoring this episode of the podcast. It's sponsoring the podcast and really people's lives. That's what she does. Absolutely. Uh, she is a mindset coach. Yes. Krista is her name. And incredible person. Totally. Amazing uh, yeah, person. Yeah, I've been able to chat with her several times. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that she is able to uh, bridge the gap, right? When you go into a business, employees don't really want to talk to HR about certain things because that's within the organization. Right. 
Right. And she bridges that gap really yeah. well, like mm-hmm. extremely well between the employees and like in HR departments. Yes, absolutely. And just brings out what some of the issues might be or whatever else. Mm-hmm. It's one of the the talents that She's she like has. Communication wizard. Yes. That's totally what it is. And bridging the gap is like putting it lightly, but helping to get people on the same page, feel comfortable talking to her and relaying that information to the other side with intentionality and, yeah. you know, really good communication. I think it's a win-win for everyone. And In a, a great respectful resource. way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's not like uh, you did this wrong or you did that mm-hmm. wrong or whatever else. It's actually just find, finding good solutions. Right. Yeah. From a business perspective, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. You know, your employees are more productive. Your business is more productive. When you get some of that out of the way, that's exactly what she does. Makes all that smooth over, gets yep. people back on track. Exactly. It's perfect. And what's great, too, because she's like a business coach. Mm-hmm. Um, she also is a certified trainer. Like, yeah. this is what she does. And she has a lot of... What I really love about it, she has a lot of personal experience mm-hmm. that she brings to the table, right? She's yeah. not just... Uh, one of those people that uh, runs her business from the outside and just says, this is how you do it. <laughs> do as like I she say. Has ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. She has that experience, that personal experience yes. to really make that happen and work and, mm-hmm. and bridge those gaps that we talked about. But she also does personal coaching, like right. people all over the world. And it's the experience and the trust that you can get with her. Not yeah. just get, but you feel right away and i think that's the impact and the change that yeah opens the doors for businesses to be more successful and people to be more successful because they have someone to guide them absolutely for sure we need to look her up i want to look her up you gotta go internet wherever you are (laughs) hit up kfgcoaching.com she has got all of the information that you need to get to where you need to go and get connected with her from a business or personal standpoint either way it's a good investment yeah i'm thinking i might like literally i might contact her right yeah get over there kfgcoaching.com that's all you need to do she'll take care of the rest thank you kfg coaching yes we thank you appreciate you and wish you the best of luck with all of our listeners here absolutely and now back to the episode and we wrote a book we're lucky enough to get kurt warner to the initial forward Mm -hmm. and for six months i don't think we sold the book (laughs) and then all of a sudden some celebrities got a hold of it, some guys in the NFL, some CEOs, and it just took off. And my retirement turned into a whole thing, like with a bus and a tea company and a clothing line. And, a, you know, a, the, the original publishers of Chicken Soup for the Soul reached out to us and signed us for a We self-published that first book, and then we had a traditional publishing deal. It, what I want to stop for a second, that self-publishing, there's a story behind that, right? Because uh, what I remember reading, when, when you first contacted me, and uh, to just put a piece of my story in, I, I, I of course, looked real quick and um, I, I, something stood out to me. And that was the faith piece. Mm-hmm. A publisher came to you and said, we'll publish this, but. But. So, yeah. Get rid of this. So, this is the thing. And I think this is for anyone who has a story to tell. Yeah. I, I think you have to stay true to who you are. Yeah. We never, when I was retired, so we never did this. Is We never saw any of the things that would branch out from this. Never saw it. We knew that that this worked. This was a thing that helps people find balance, that people are lost and they're feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Dave wasn't alone. People make choices. I've made bad choices too, they're just not in the book. Dave, <laughs> Dave writes about his, I'll keep mine private. But um, so we all we all do that. And mm-hmm. so when we told this, this is what happened with that initial manuscript. We, we knew some people who knew some people mm-hmm. and got it in front of some publishers. And they said, hey, this, I remember it vividly. They said, there's, this actually has merit. It's easy to understand, easy to implement, it's catchy, it's, it's storytelling, it's, it's easy to read. Two things they go. One is you gotta change the word ULA, which we didn't even think about that because we love that word. Yeah. <laughs> like, because no one makes no sense. And now people have ULA license plates and ULA tattoos, and we're like, it's a big thing. Like, it's on everything. So we said, no, we're keeping ULA. And then they go, and you gotta remove the faith thing. And it's gonna rub people the wrong way. And we're like, I look at Dave and we're like, this meeting's over because mm-hmm. it, it, you cannot have a full life. You cannot have a complete life. You cannot have an ULA life if you're not grounded in faith at some level. Yeah. Because you, 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 me, everyone watching is not going to avoid struggle. You Correct. just need to learn to yes. struggle well. Yes. You just need to learn that, okay, that is part of my journey. It's not my, it's not my story. It's not my identity. 
This is just part of this story. And you need to learn to overcome. Like if they would have sat there on his hands and go, I guess this is my yeah. plight in life, he'd still be there. Mm -hmm. But he's like, no, this is just where I am, not who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step up. I'm going to put on my shoes and I'm going to go move forward. And that's, and the cool thing about it is we didn't change any of those things. So if we wanted to go with the traditional publisher at that point, we would have had to take the name Ula off it mm -hmm. and we would have had to remove faith. Well, that's not the whole story. Yeah. So we stayed strong, self-published, which is a brave endeavor. It's, that's <laughs> huge. <laughs> it's, especially because we had no audience. I had, yeah. now there's a million people following Ula on social media. Okay. At that point, I had a hot million email account. Yeah. I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't on Twitter. I, I didn't, didn't even know that stuff. Yeah. This, and this was just a few years back. Mm -hmm. So it's scary to have a book and know where to get it. But we just trusted that if we got this message in front of people, that eventually it would move forward. Yeah. Nice. Um, the bus seems like a gimmick, right? Like when you first look at it and things, it's a gimmick. But you told me there's been three engines in this bus. Yeah, the bus is not, the bus is legit. Yeah. Like the like bus, like, and no one would sit around a boardroom and go, how should we grow a business? Well, let's buy a 1970 bus and drive to 48 states and meet people one by one. Right. And we've never sold a thing out of the bus. Yeah. We, we're just, we should have, we should be selling weed because everyone thinks we're selling weed out of that bus. <laughs> right. But we say hope, not no. Like we're <laughs> selling hope. And all we're doing is all the, the point of the bus is, uh, it's just reconnecting people to their dreams. Mm -hmm. We're so busy going from point A to point B that we never yeah. stop back and go, am I on the path I want to be on right. in my career? Am I on the path I want to be on for my finances? We're just busy trying to pay the bills and try to stay on the treadmill and trying to just not get fired. And try, you just, it, it, no one's stepping out and looking at that. And when you, that bus rolls up, we'll have to cut in a picture of it here or something. Yeah, we will. Yeah. It, it just causes people, it causes people to pause mm -hmm. and first smile and they go, what's this? It starts a yeah. conversation. So you and I dr drive around everywhere, yeah. especially in Phoenix. It's better in Rochester, yeah. but everyone's got their head down and their phone and they're not mm -hmm. even, when I, we pull up at the bus, we have conversations with people we normally wouldn't have conversations right. with. And we have story after story of people we met on the tour that say, hey, I met you at a gas station in Kentucky. <laughs> And I healed my marriage. Wow. Or I met you uh, at that beach coffee house in North Carolina and I paid off debt. And we don't even remember the interactions, but they remember the interaction with the bus. And for those of, of your listeners who don't know what the bus is, it's a 70s surf bus. And we, it started not as a gimmick. It started as how do we get this message out there? that we had events that were selling out and we wanted to get to everybody because not just the people at the events. So we would buy this bus. We took our teenage sons on a road trip from uh, San Diego up to San, San Francisco. It was a blue bus and we have these little stickers mm -hmm. and a Sharpie. It's all we have, a blue bus, <laughs> stickers and a Sharpie. And they're color coded by the key areas of life, mm -hmm. fitness, finance, family, field, which is your career, yeah. faith, friends, and fun. Those are the seven Fs of ULA. And we show up and go, what do you want for your life? What do you want for your life? And usually they just, they're blown away. And the, the sad thing is though, we thought it would be this fun thing. Like I want to go to Disney world or something. Yeah. Many times people tear up. Sure. You hand them that and we think it's going to be this great moment of like, Oh, let's but, dream together. Yeah. yeah. And th they've lost sight mm -hmm. somewhere between junior high when they had big dreams yeah. and driving to work when they're 42, they don't even know what they want anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment. That's powerful. It's very powerful. So it turned into be this thing that, so I'm gonna tell you one story from, from that first tour. Um, we were from San Diego going up the coast with our boys. And we were north of LA, um, north of LA, past Malibu on our way to Santa Barbara. Sun was setting. We'd been just having a blast. And you gotta understand the bus at this point does it, it's covered 25 layers in dreams now. Back then it looked like a chicken pox. <laughs> you know, cause it's, it's like the first layer just in random <laughs> stickers on the right. side of this bus. Yeah. And now a quick break for your ears if you're watching and your eyes if you're, wait, did I get that right? Here's some music. And now back to the episode. And the sun was setting south of Santa Barbara and the boys were like, dude, we've been doing this all day. They can see the ocean on the left-hand side of the bus. They're like, can we? I've been so, on that road. That's yeah, a it's beautiful a, drive. Oh, PCH, yes. man. It's, yes. it's bucket list stuff. Yes. So. So we pull over at this state park right on the beach and the boys run to the surf and start playing in the surf. This is right at sunset. And as we look to the right, there's a, a beautiful couple with two girls and a professional photographer. I mean, it looks like that, the Christmas mm -hmm. card photo, right? Mm -hmm. Sun setting, Pacific Ocean, beach on Santa Barbara. 
And we're standing up in the parking lot watching the boys playing, watching this family. Well, the family comes up after the photos and the, the, the lady's like, what, what are you guys about? We're like, hey, we're just, we're to collect a million dreams. Our goal is to collect 1 million dreams on the side of this bus. Would you like to put one on? So we have a tray of the different colors of dreams. Okay. She grabs a family sticker mm -hmm. and a Sharpie and she goes to the back of the bus and she slaps it on and comes around. She goes, this is so cool guys. Keep doing what you're doing. High fives us, Get, gets in the car with her husband and two daughters and rolls. Well, once they get around the corner, we're like little kids, right? We're like, we don't have that many dreams. What do we do? Yeah. We go to the back and say, what did she write? Like, what is she? Yeah, yeah. And she said, I want to be strong enough through my stage four cancer mm. to see my girls become women. And we rallied the boys. Wow. Yeah. We wow. rallied the boys, turned the music off, yeah. got in the bus and rolled that's... it. And that's the, that's the moment we realized that this was cool. Yeah. That's the, that's the, think about this woman who, who's arguably facing yeah. the biggest challenge right. any woman could face. Yes. And she's doing it with, with dignity and she's doing it in a way that can inspire anybody to overcome whatever they have to overcome. Yeah. So we thought there was going to be this tour of like, yeah. And it's like, we have had so many moments like that, that uh, you, you'll have to read the dreams on the bus. Yeah. And you, you can, you get a, you get a peek into the soul of the people you meet and they're all going through a different struggle. Yeah. And, and they're all trying to do that one thing that if they did that one thing, it would transform their life. And that's why the bus is so powerful. And she wasn't catastrophizing what was happening to her. She, that was a private moment for her, mm -hmm. right? She put it around the back of the bus. Yeah, gave her. It, 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 yes, that was for her. That was humble. And she did it in a way that she wasn't bawling in front of the <laughs> yeah. bus. She did it with a high five and she did it with, with courage and strength. Like, I got this, yeah. I got this. And and that's the whole point of this is, is People are so much more capable. I, I just I was I just did a, a, a Facebook live and I was talking about how we're just settling for average. Mm -hmm. And someone said, I think I'm gonna do another thing on it, they said, Yeah, we're dunking on a six foot hoop. Yeah. You know, like we're settling for I believe God has designed us to dunk on a ten foot hoop. Yeah. But you're gonna need to work at it. Yeah. You're gonna need to stretch and exercise and you play basketball? I don't. I can't dunk on a ten foot hoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it a few times in my life. Have you really? Back. I have. Oh, yeah. I used to jump rope like crazy yeah. in high but school. You, and you have you, the potential. You had to, exactly. You, I had but to you can't it. be average and dunk on a 10 foot hoop. And we're, we're yeah, I couldn't do it in a game. I, I mean, it, it took a lot. I'm 5'10. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive. So, hard. That's impressive. So, but you yeah. could, that's yeah. a perfect times example. In my life, I did it. You can yeah. do it, but you're going to have to work to dunk on a test. Exactly. But as a society, and we should work. We should. This is yes. the point. That's the gap. So yes. as a society, we're dunking on a six foot hoop. Yes. Financially, the average family spends $2,038 a month to service debt. Yeah. That's dunking on a six foot hoop. Yeah. You aren't designed to do that. I, I just did the math on this for someone I was coaching that if, if you're an average person and you're 22 and you, you pay $2,038 a month until you're 65, You've paid a million dollars out of your pocket, yeah. but someone, the bank, has earned sixteen million. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice if that if you were the guy who earned the sixteen million, not right. the bank? Yeah. And that's dunking on six foot hoop. You're just saying everyone's content paying their payments. And it's the same way in your health too. Like people are like, ah, oh, you know, at least at least I'm not them. Yeah. But the reality is there's so much more potential in you in each of these categories. So I wake up like a child every day going, How can I be better in this category? How can I be better in this category? And just take little baby steps toward that every day. See, there's such a difference between like reality and perceived reality. Yeah. And people think they're dunking on that 10 foot hoop yeah. all the time. But when you, what, with what you're doing, you can show them that, wait a minute, this is the six foot. Yeah, and yeah you're, you're, it, you're, the potential is so much more. Yeah. The, the potential is so much. And the, the problem is, is we've all been beat up. For sure. We've all experienced failure, setback, bad decisions. We're carrying guilt. We're, we're carrying debt. We're carrying these things that hold us back. So many times the first step is start pulling the, these things off yeah. that are holding you back. And yeah. then you start to see the potential inside of you, but you have to also actively go get it. Right. You have to say, you have to have a target. You have to go to the gym. Yeah. And then when you're at the gym, don't take the weights out of the gym. Yeah. Put more weights in the gym. If that's your goal. Like, yeah. so you have to see your goal every day and every day take action steps toward mm -hmm. it. So if, if like the people on the bus that we meet, we hand them a sticker and Trevor, they don't even know what the goal is. Doesn't yeah. matter. Right. Cause you first have to see it. Yeah. Then you have to map a course to it. Mm -hmm. And that's, those are the first, but then you also have to do the work. Yeah. And usually we get stuck, some, we can't see it. Well, they, they want the self-driving car, right? They want a self-driving car. I'm totally getting one of those when they come in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, that's <laughs> just know. The, the mentality, right? That you just sit back 
and you just coast along and, and let it's just auto. And social media has made that worse uh, because yes. everyone looks amazing on Instagram. Yes. When we were younger, it was the one Christmas card you got once a right. year where they sent you, your friend sent you the card and they give the, the little typewritten thing of all the amazing <laughs> places they've been and all their kids' accomplishments. Yep. And, but the, and that was once a year so we could swallow it barely, yeah. you know? Yeah. But now we're getting that every day on in Instagram. And I've been studying some of that too. And like, it's actually the biggest problem with it is it disconnects people actually, of course, as you no doubt know. And it, they think it connects them. And what happens is, is people are saying, no, I don't want to go out to dinner tonight. No, I don't want to go play basketball. No, I don't. They just sit and we're connected on the phone. Yeah. There's more and more people that are so lonely right now. Like I just heard something on a different podcast that uh, people in in retirement age are the loneliest that they've ever been in recorded history. We we do an event every year called Ulapalooza. Yeah. And we start the event um, every year <clears throat> by taking these seven areas, fitness, finance, family, field, which is a career, faith, friends, and fun. And we pull statistics um, like where are we as a culture? Are we moving forward as a culture? Are we going closer to the 10 foot hoop? Yeah. <laughs> are we going farther away? Right. And this year for the first time to bring up that stat in the category of friends, uh, last year, the stat we brought up was toxicity in friendships, okay. um, bullying and just how people keep toxic people in their, their ring of being. Yeah. But this year, all the data was pointing to loneliness mm -hmm. and not just in the elderly community, which is no, but it's, it's the youth. Yeah. But because which is really isolated. The, the elderly community. That's really rare. Mm -hmm. That's really rare. You, you retire, you go hang out with your friends, you're in a retirement home, everybody's around you, you go you know, hang out in the cafeteria, all those things, and that's just not even happening now. It's a real they're thing. They're all on Facebook. It, yeah, it's Seriously, a real, that's no, the... It, it's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. And they're getting pulled into negative <clears throat> conversation, mm -hmm. news and politics and all this, Absolutely. and fear, and they're being pulled out of life yeah. and, and versus like one-on-one -on -one communication yeah. and relationship. Yeah. It, it's true. Like, well, 95% of our message is positive. Like, you are designed by God for greatness and a purpose. Don't settle for an ordinary life because extraordinary is in there. We will guide you to that. And now, a quick break for you to think about all the the things you love in life, like Skittles. I love Skittles. And now, back to the episode. But you have to acknowledge that as a culture, it's going this way. Yeah, for sure. If, we, if Every year we look at the data for that event, and every year, every, and we have coaches all over the, the world now coaching this stuff, we think, are we making a difference? And no, and I am close because it's it's still the data speaks that we're becoming less healthy. Mm -hmm. We're becoming more in debt. We're, faith is being removed from everything. Everyone's deferring fun. No one has purpose. So if we look at our categories of seven areas, we're getting farther away from that target. So the best way to fix that though is one by one. Yeah. It, it becomes a little overwhelming when you look at society, <clears throat> but what I always tell people, all you gotta do, if you wanna be a world changer, all you gotta do is do you. Yeah, And exactly. you gotta be a better person in these areas next year than you are today. And if yeah. you do that, you're gonna naturally, because you've been around people like that, they put off a light Yeah, and you're like, what do you have? Mm -hmm. I want what you have. And then you say, hey, this is what I've been working on. It helped me and maybe it can help you. And as people start following not society's path for their life, yeah. but that purpose, because some people are, the cool thing we look at the bus, some people for career, they get, I wanna be an artist. I don't mm. want to be an artist. Right. I like business. They, you yeah. know, I want to be an entrepreneur. That's me. Yeah. Everyone's different. Mm. The goals, and I think society wants to put us all in one bucket and say, no, you need a, you need this house in this neighborhood, yeah. a trip to Disney World, two cars, white picket fence, two and a half kids, and then you're going to be good. Okay, a couple dogs. Yeah, you. I got two, you can have them. No, they're, they're, they're here. But everyone's different. Some people yeah. love dogs, some people love cats. That's the yeah. part in the ULA that has taught me is that we're all unique. And, and the goals and dreams we have for our lives are unique. Right. We don't have to be like the Joneses. You shouldn't be. Exactly. A, you can be if that's really what your goal and dream is. But it's, usually it's not, by the way. It, 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 that's true. We, we, have a, we have a chapter in one of the books called The Joneses Don't Know Jack. Okay. Because they, they, tru they truly don't. And this is what happens. The, the people that talk to me when they're 45 yeah. is they're like, I'm 55 to 80 percent, depending on the study. So 55 to 80 percent of people drive to a job they hate every day. Mm -hmm. 53% of first marriages end in divorce and debt's out of control. So just think of the average, again, that belt part of the curve yeah. is you drive to a job you hate, come home to a spouse you can't stand to look at a stack of bills you can't pay. Mm -hmm. 
And and then when I talk to these people, I'm like, why are you doing something you hate? You spend a third of your life doing it. And I understand you have to pay the bills. You can't just leave and hope it right. works out. So there's there's day jobs. But it's that autopilot, I think. It, you know, they're on that autopilot all the time. This is this is typical. This is typical. Like, oh, what do you do? I'm a teacher. It's driving me crazy. I'm like, why are you a teacher? Mm -hmm. Well, my dad was a teacher, and that looked like, and my uncle's a teacher. I'm like, they've never really. They've never, I, there's a chapter in another one, a book in the category of field where this gal was, she liked dogs. So everyone's saying, you should be a vet. So she became a vet. She's all the training to become a vet. And she's five years into being a vet. Going, I hate being a vet. Yeah. Just because I like dogs doesn't mean I want to be a no, vet. Exactly. So no one really takes the time to step up. Is, am, I, am I doing this for me? Or am I doing it because my parents think it's a good idea? Or my school counselor said it was a good idea? Or I Googled what's the best paying jobs in Phoenix? And that, you know, I picked the top. <laughs> right. I mean, you have to really step back. If you're gonna spend a, th think of that, like who you marry and what you do for work, that's a third of your life and a third of your life. Yeah. And the other third, you're sleeping. <laughs> so <laughs> those are some decisions you wanna get right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta enjoy that when you're awake, right? You exactly. gotta enjoy the work, your spouse, all those. It works, work, right? Your... There's, there's times, but, yes, absolutely. but in general, you you want to be in the the fifty five percent or less. They go, you know what? I I love what I do. Yeah, and you can work hard and love what you do. There's nothing wrong with that, and you can work hard and hate it, and then you know it's gonna be. A but but you have life. to you have to declare the change, and you have to you have to map a course. So if you're in a job you hate now, yeah, it, you can't just say you know. Give them a slip tomorrow and try to figure it out. I yeah. mean, you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to this job early. I'm gonna stay late. I'm gonna serve it with honor and dignity, and just know people are watching, and something may develop from that. Right. But at the same time, I'm gonna plan something over here yeah. because I'm not gonna do this forever. Absolutely. Let's go see the bus. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do a segment in the bus, and then uh, we'll snap some photos and things like that. But at that point, I want you to make sure and tell people how the, they can find you and your book and your materials. Yeah, for sure. Stuff. I'd love to hang out. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> We're in the bus. Yeah, welcome to the bus, man. Yeah, was, well, the bus is, of dreams. Yeah, absolutely. This is really like a legit 1970 <laughs> VW bus. There is the speedometer doesn't work. Yeah, none of the gauges work. Well, you can't go over 40 um, anyway, can you? No, downhill. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's crazy. So yeah. it's it's the real thing. We you mentioned it earlier, but we're on our third engine. We've literally left two on the side of the road. Um, mm. And of all the things I've ever done in my whole life, and I've had some cool life experiences, this is still the coolest thing. Yeah, uh, hopping on the bus and meeting people one on one and having conversations about life and saying, "What do you want for your life?" Right, and making it all about them. Yeah, saying because so many people don't even in, invest in them. Like, what do you want for your life? And then support them. We took a chance to look at some of the dreams on the outside of the bus. Yeah. And you, you can see that the goals and dreams that people have are unique to them. and they're Completely unique and they're very vast and different. Very different. Some yeah. people some people want to be a millionaire. Some people just want to pay rent. And yeah, and the migraine free. And yeah. The, uh, there's, there's, yeah, get out of an abusive relationship. Yeah. There's everything from go to Disney World and I want to be a transformer from a fourth grader in Wisconsin. <laughs> you know, like I, it's like there's just, we don't tell them what to dream. We just told them, tell them to dream and dream yeah. big. Like what do you want for your life? Yeah, that's so cool. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Troy. A pleasure. We're going to take some pictures and yeah, let's do see, it. see if this bus runs. There's, there's a way out. Yeah, the bus does run. It doesn't go fast, but yeah. it does run. And there's a way uh, for your followers to get their dream on this bus, legitimately get their dream. Yeah, so yeah, tell us if what, you go what to we need to do. Ula Life, O O L A L I F E dot com. That's a good. And we're going to put this like everywhere. That's on, a good jump on, off place. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on Instagram. Now I am on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook and Twitter. So is Dave, the other guy. In, in, we co authored all these books together. Mm -hmm. He's on this bus with me. But if you go there, there's, there's a link to get your dream on the bus. And actually, if you submit it, we hand and write it mm -hmm. and we put your dream on the bus with a collective energy of 25 layers we figure that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 140,000 dreams now we've collected wow. and our goal our goal in our in ula is to collect 1 million dreams and feed 1 million kids we have a tea company for every bag purchase we give a, a meal to a child in need so our mission right now is specifically this let's collect a million dreams and inspire hope but also feed a million kids awesome thanks a lot yeah pleasure man see ya did you like the bus? I want to ride on the bus. I know, right? I really just want a bus just like that. But what a genius idea. He's like a hippie Tony Robbins. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, that's like I, the best thing I could think of as I'm listening to him and combining those two things. I mean, people must thought he was crazy, but he's making a huge impact. Yeah, and the thing is, is it was an unintentional impact, right? Yes. Like They just decided, hey, I think more people should learn about this and how we mm -hmm. think and what our focus is and it just so has grown dramatically and 
um, he, that so much good that they do. They have their mm-hmm. teas, and, and that's going to good causes. And I want you guys to check them out. We're going to put the websites like everywhere on our on our yes. information too. So they got they have stuff everywhere. But I love his like million dreams mission because nobody dreams anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like people get so you know meticulous about their day to day and i have to hit this target but they just don't dream anymore yeah and i think dreaming there's such a difference between dreaming and actually execution yeah right like oh, for sure this was a dream but it wasn't just didn't stay a dream and there mm-hmm. was execution involved and that's what we have to yeah. do with our dreams absolutely it has you, to be a balance there the thing that i i guess as we close this out i just you you need to check the books out. Mm-hmm. You need to check out just all of their information. We could talk about it, but that would really yes. go no, really nowhere, right? Something that everyone fights for is that balance in your life, and it's not yeah. just a place. It, it's like a pathway, and yeah. he really combines all the necessary tools into that book and says, "Let's just lay it out. Let's call it what it is, and let's let's get to where we need to go." Absolutely, it's a little roadmap. And talk about kind of that huge courage piece. Like he was retired, mm-hmm. or they were retired, you know, and and they were happy where they were at. Yeah, and just he was like, "I got to do this, mm-hmm. right?" And did it. Yes, didn't need to do it. No, wanted to do it for other people. But that he, you know, Liz lives this narrative within his own life that, yeah. you know, he had this underlying desire to. And I think that was probably already built within him always. But oh, yeah, it's like it unlocking built. this whole yeah, other yeah. level that, you know, is bringing the success and balance that he's found, you know, to other people and gaining the new satisfaction in that. He did it right. He did that. He brought that balance he had in that striving balance that he mm-hmm. had in his own life yeah. to other people right. because it was important to him, not because there was anything other than that. It was important to him. Yeah, his core them. mission. And that's yeah. what you see in his company, his messages, even just like a video day today. day. Yeah. So you can see that it's not just another talking point. He really lives out this message and really passionately wants to share that with everyone else. Absolutely. So everybody check it out. Follow us. Follow him. Yes. It's important. We're here to help people. Right. Absolutely. See you next time. <laughs>